Okay, in this video, we're going to look at digital logic circuits, and later on we'll look at CPLDs. Now this is my little digital logic circuit I have on my breadboard. It's basically a little toggle circuit. So every time I press my push button switch, it toggles the LED. Now I'm using a dual D flip-flop. It's a 4013. It's a 4000 series CMOS. So these is a positive edge triggered flip-flops, and they run on 3.3 volts to 15 volts. Now inside the 4013 package is actually two independent flip-flops. Each one has their own independent set and reset line, so we can configure them as RS flip-flops. They have a D in clock input, and they have a Q and a Q naught output. Now on my circuit, I'm using both flip-flops. The first flip-flop is used to, uh, for a contact bounce elimination of the push-button switch, so we have a clean, nice clean clocking signal for the second flip-flop. And the second flip-flop is configured as a divide by two, or toggle, and that's, it takes the input from the switch and toggles the LED. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my little toggle circuit. And I'm using both flip-flops in the 4013 package. And if you look at the flip-flop on the left, it's configured as an RS flip-flop. And the D input and C input are not used, so they're tied to ground. So the output of the switch is fed to the set and reset lines of the flip-flop. Now this flip-flop is used for contact bounce elimination. So it will clean up the signal of the switch, so the Q output on pin 1 will be clean, which is feeding the second flip-flop. Now the second flip-flop is configured as a divide by 2 or toggle. You can see the Q naught, pin 12, is fed up to the D input, pin 9. So whenever there's a positive going clock on this flip-flop, whatever logic level is on the D will be transferred over to the Q and latched. At the same time, the Q naught, which is the opposite of Q, will be fed back to the D, so in the next clock, it will actually toggle the output. So every time I press on the push button switch, I can get a toggle action on my LED. Okay, if you're a student or electronic hobbyist and you want to learn about digital logic circuits, the first thing you do is dig out the IC you want to learn about. It could be an AND gate, an OR gate, exclusive OR, a flip flop, a counter, or an inverter, and you mount it on a breadboard. Then you get a bunch of switches and LEDs and go through the truth table. But what usually happens, you're trying, to, you're trying to dig up that chip you want to learn about and you can't find it in your parts bin, so you have to order it online or locally. Or you can get one of these. This is a CPLD, a Complex Programmable Logic Device, and that's a chip here. Now before the 4000 series CMOS logic came out, there was a 7400 TTL logic family, and that set the standard for what kind of logic functions were available in a DIP package. Now inside this chip is the whole 7400 TTL family of logic functions, so you don't have to worry about going out and buying that individual chip for breadboarding. Now this chip has 100 pins, there's 25 pins around each side, and each one of these pins is broken out into these headers. Now it's, this board is powered by 5 volts, and there's an onboard 3.3 volt regulator which powers the chip. Now there's also a 50 megahertz clock, which you could use in your circuit, you could divide it down to whatever frequency you want, and there's a, there's a user LED up top. So here's a power switch over here, I'll power it on, and you can see the power LED come on. And you can see there's the user LED is blinking. So I took my 50 megahertz clock and I divided it by 50 million to get a, a, a 1 hertz clock that's driving this LED. This is your JTAG connector where you hook up uh, your uh, USB blaster and you hook it up into your computer. And by using software in a GUI, you could actually create any logical function that you want. But this is all done on the, com on the computer, so there's no breadboarding. All your breadboarding is done on your computer. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll hook this up and I'll simulate my toggle circuit that I used with a 4000, 4013 flip flop and I'll simulate that in, in, this, in this CPLD. Okay, I have Cordis 2 up and running on my computer and it's a free download from Altera. This is the software I use to program my CPLD board. Now you see on the screen I've brought up the 7474. That's a 7400 logic equivalent of the 4013 it's a dual D flip-flop. And you can see it's wired up the same as I did on my breadboard. And I brought the S and R, the set and reset pins, out to pin 28 and pin 1. That's uh, on the headers on, on the CPLD board. And the output LED goes to pin 77. That's connected to the onboard user LED on the CPLD board. So I programmed this 7474 into my CPLD. So all I have to do is power it up and hook up a couple of pull-up resistors on the set and reset pins and hook it up to the push-button switch. And this will simulate 
my little toggle circuit that I had on my breadboard. Now I'll show you I could bring up any other logic if I double click on the on the screen and we could go to here's the, all the TT TTL 7400 so here's your 7400 that's a NAND gate 7402 4 and I could go down I could select any any gate any logic that I want and it goes all the way down I could, I could go all the way down this every every TTL logic function available in the 7400 logic series I could actually bring up and, and uh, program into the CPLD okay I got my CPLD board up and running programmed with the 7474 dual D flip-flop circuitry and I got my breadboard out with a push-button switch mounted on it with a couple of pull-up resistors and they're connected to set and reset lines on the D flip-flop on board the CPLD. I also brought out the user LED on t onto the breadboard so it's a little bit easier to see. Now if I toggle the push-button switch you can see the LED toggling. Now the CPLD that I'm using is the Altera EPM 240T 100C5 and it's their Max 2 series. Now this CPLD board is available online and it's pretty inexpensive it's a lot cheaper than buying the whole family of 7400 logic function ICs. Okay, if you're a student and you're serious about digital logic circuits and breadboarding digital logic gates, this is probably the best way to go. And as a bonus, you'll be learning about CPLDs. Now you could program some pretty sophisticated circuits on a CPLD, and unlike a microcontroller that only could do one task at a time, you could have many isolated circuits running on a CPLD, so it's pretty powerful. Now if you want a more detailed description on how to program a CPLD, I'll link a video in the description box to give you more insight on how to program one of these CPLDs. So I hope this video gives you some uh, idea on the, on the capabilities and what you could do with a CPLD.